Good morning. Good morning. Nah. Good morning. Morning. Now you're there. Right, it's nice to see you. Those of you that I've not met so far, my name's Father Neil. I'm not sure I qualify as the new rector of St. Nick's anymore, nine months in. I feel new still. Will you allow me that? I'm the new rector of St. Nick's. Um, Those of you that I know, good morning. Those of you I'm yet to meet, you're very welcome. Welcome to your parish church. Um, This morning, as you know, we have our Cubs Uh, and our beavers service so it's a shorter service now I'll let you into a little story that I know Um, when I uh, once sang for the queen when I once sang for the queen I I was told that she said I don't mind high church I don't mind low church but I prefer short church and this morning is short church so this morning is very much based upon the children, and you will forgive me for being, having been a teacher for 25 years. Um, it will be focused on the children um, this morning. And we're going to look at promises. So um, there are two hymns that are in your order of service, so you don't need anything else other than uh, those hymns that are there. And uh, it's an opportunity to reflect on the promises that we make and the promises that we keep and what happens when we don't. More about which in a moment. Hope you enjoy uh, being with us this morning. Afterwards, there's coffee and cake. Cake. In the uh, parish hall afterwards. Yes, I did say the C word, cake. Yeah, I know you've got you there then. Um, <laughs> so do come and see us after, after the service for that. I'm going to ask the um, uniforms to come in in a second. As they do, please stand to sing the hymn and uh, we will uh, put the colours on the altar. Is that okay? Thank you very much. Let's go and process our uniformed organisations in, and then we'll sing our first hymn. Please stand. Right, those of the family from St Nicholas uh, Infant School will know what I'm going to do now. Ready? If you're not sure, follow what I do with my hands and copy me. Okay, put your hands up. Normally your right hand. Your other right. There we go. And then you go, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's do that together. Ready? Arm out. So you see what shape we're making. Ready? In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now, Um, We're here to hear a story this morning about promises, and I can see some of you have already made some promises this morning, and I wonder how many we can spot. 
But let's listen to our reading from the Bible this morning first. So everybody have a seat, and Benedict is going to read to us from the Bible. Is that about the right height? So as if it's an ice cream, okay? Nice and close. Right there, right there, right there. When Abraham was very old, the Lord appeared to him and said, I am God, all-powerful. If you obey me and do, and always do right, I will keep my promise to you and give you more children and family than can be counted. Abraham bowed with his face to the ground, and God said, I promise that you will be the father of many nations. I will, I will give you a lot of descendants, and they will become great nations. Some of them will even be kings. I will always keep the promise I have made to you and your descendants because I am your God and their God. Abraham, you all future members of your family must promise to obey me. Abraham bowed with his face to the ground and thought, I am almost 100 years old. How can I become a father? And Sarah is 90. How can she have a child? So he started laughing. God said, you and Sarah will have a son. His name will be Isaac, and I will make an everlasting promise to him too. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Benedict. So, here's a little thing for you to do in the next couple of seconds if you want to drift off. How many times was the word promise in that reading? Have a go, have a look, see what you think. How many words, how many times does the word promise appear in that reading? And while you're doing some counting, I'm going to talk to the grown-ups. While they count the answer to that question, I want you to think this morning about the promises that you make. Whether it's, I promise to remember to bring milk home tonight, little promise, to promises about... I do, I will, weddings, as people stand here and I declare them to be married, promises of marriage. I want you to think about the promises that are on your notes in your pockets. Which notes am I thinking of? The word promise appears in a note in your pocket. Do you know which one I'm talking about? Your Five pound notes? Oh, do you remember those? Ten pound notes? Do you remember those? Twenties and fifties, never seen those, I'm a vicar. But it does say on those, I promise to pay the bearer the sum of. Oh, I didn't know that. There you go, pub quiz knowledge. That's just bought you half a pint. So you've got promises of wedding rings. We've got promises on banknotes. We've got promises of bringing home the milk just want you to think of that for a second before we start our proper thinking. What was the answer? How many times did the word promise appear? Look at this. Hands up and everything. Go on, you were first. Tell me. Five. Anybody want to raise five? You th- no, no, you're not so sure. How many do you think? You think four? Five? Five. Five? Five. Maybe it was five. Promise is a really big word. It's quite a small word, but it's a huge word. Am I right, Wayne? Sorry, I was counting. Oh, how many did you get to? Five. Five. Maybe it was. Good. Yes, so this morning we're thinking about promises. We've all, you've already made a promise. Maybe not.
Okay, so we all made a promise, and, uh, and as, a, as a sign of being that promise of belonging and being part of that, you get a badge. Neil and I made a particular promise, that I don't know if there's many other people that have made that promise, we, we promised to do what, to behave in a particular way and to be a particular thing at the start of, I don't know, what do you call it, a career, at the start of our job? Definitely not a career. <laughs> ministers and, and priests, and so we've got this as a badge, as it were, so that other people can avoid us when they see us in the high street. Um, Guaranteed to get you a place on the train. Okay. Oh yes, that's yeah. true. Lots of space, just put your dog collar on. Okay. Nobody wants to sit next to you. And then, I promise that's true, sorry. No, no, no. And then here's about 10 pound notes, I found that one of the old copies. He looks at in very small print. I think it's increasingly small. <laughs> Do you want me to look after that for you? No, it's okay. Not. I was using it as a bookmark. I promise not to steal it. And I don't know, maybe sometimes we make promises to friends as well. You know, sometimes our friends will say, well, I promise that you can come around to tea uh, tomorrow. And, uh, or I promise that uh, well, we'll, be, we'll always try to be the best friends that we can be. But sometimes, I don't know about you, Neil, sometimes, yeah. um, it's sometimes hard to keep our promises. It is, but I did promise chocolate, didn't I? So, um, shall we share some chocolate? Yes, let's. Okay, right. Um, I'm just going to pick a few people. Don't open it yet, I'll tell you when you can. There's one there. I'm just going to pick randomly, okay? There's one there. There's one there, because you answered first. There's one there, because your hand went up quickest. There's one there. There's one there. Could it be me? Could it be me? It could be you. It's like the national uh, national lottery. Uh, could be you. And it could be you. Right, if you've got... What have you got, by the way? Kit Kats. If you've got a Kit Kat, should we let them eat it now? Let's let them eat it now. Go on, open, open your Kit Kats now, just for a second. Because um, I promise you'll enjoy those. And um, they're quite nice, really. Oh, uh, Wayne, would you like one? Oh, yes, I'd be lovely. Yeah, lovely. Okay. I promised you chocolate. Oh, you've got chocolate. Open that. Yeah. No, 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 no. Don't be silly. You've got chocolate. What are you talking about? I don't know what you're talking about. Mine's fine. Oh, look. Yummy. Mmm. 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 Nice. Oh, you're too much of time. Hang on a minute. Did I promise you chocolate? Yeah. Did you not get chocolate? What did you get? Wood. Am I a big meanie? Yes. I am a big meanie, aren't I? Look, this is really nice. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, excuse me. How? I don't want wood. You want what I promised. How did you feel when I let you down? Very upset and annoyed. And I got chocolate. You're brilliant. Now, what are the three words that we straight away think of when somebody gets something and we don't and we go, that's not fair. A promise is about making sure things are fair. Now, Benedict, who read very well, thank you very much, by the way, Benedict. Benedict read us a story about a man called Abraham. And Abraham was, do you remember from the story? Have a look. How old was he? Go on, shout it out. Nearly a hundred years old. And God says, you're going to be a dad. And he's like, what? No way, my knees aren't up for it. I can't change nappies at a hundred. Trust me, it's quite difficult as you're approaching 50. And God says, no, 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 I promise. And what, what's more is I promise that you're going to have so many children, there are going to be more children than there are stars in the Milky Way. And God kept his promise. You see, I'm not God. And therefore, I'm likely to let people down. And that's okay, because I can turn to God and say, God, I'm really sorry, I'll try better next time. And God says, okay, try better next time. Try to keep your promise. But God never lets us down. You see, God will always stay with you and will always keep his promise. And do you think I should keep my promise? I think I should too. And it's interesting...
that when God says, I'll keep my promise, he said, you're going to have more children than there are, what did he say? Stars in the Milky Way. And that made me think, I think you should have a Milky Way each. So, I wonder what's in these. Oh, could it be the real thing? Could it be something unspeakable? Could it be, I don't know, what do you think? Why don't we wait until everybody's got them? I like causing chaos. Wait until everybody's got them. Kath, is there anybody who shouldn't have one of these? You've sorted. Um, wait until everybody's got one, and then we'll see. Good catch. And then we'll see whether it's real or not. Uh, well, you know, maybe I keep my promises, maybe I don't. Who knows? Maybe I do, maybe I don't. It's difficult to know. Who knows? Maybe, maybe not. Have another one. Yeah, you can have one. Um, let's see. Ready? Steady. Let's open our sweets and see if I keep my promise. Is it true? Yeah. How do we feel now? Go on, take them around. How do you feel now? He took mine. How do you feel now? Happy. Happy. It's good to keep your promises. <laughs> Good to keep your promises. You can eat it. It's fine. Now. We. Only the little children, Wayne. Not the big children. All right. Church wardens looking hungry. What have we learned about promises? When we keep them, it matters, doesn't it? When we keep our promises, it matters. If I promise to tell the truth, it matters. If I promise to do my, my best for the Queen and for the country and for the Cub Scouts rules, it matters. When you break your word, people get let down. When you break your promises, people get sad. So it's really important, I want you to remember today, that God always keeps his promises. And most importantly... When we don't keep our promise, when we do make a mistake, it's not the end of the world. Because God says, pick yourself up, dust yourself off, and start all over again. Do you know that song? It's alright, we're not going to sing it. Stand up, dust yourself off, and start all over again. That's the promise that God makes. So enjoy the chocolate. And remember to keep your promises. Amen. We're now going to say our prayers, aren't we? Who's going to lead us in prayer, Kath? Andrew at the top here didn't get any chocolate, so I make sure that he's got one too. Blessing for loved ones and friends that are near. <clears throat> we thank you for food and for life and for the food of Club Scouting that's here. We thank you for leaders who care about girls and boys who give us their time that better than toys. We thank you for dads who help us learn right, for mums who sew on our badges at night. For all this, thank you, dear Lord, up above, for being in scouting is something we love. 
We thank you, God, for our pack and for all the children and families who are touched by scouting. Make us strong as we work together to help other people and as we do our duty to you and to our country. Help us remember to live by the Cub Scout law and promise. Amen. Do you know what amen means? It means I agree. And we all agree to that, don't we? So let's say amen really loudly. Amen. We're going to stand to sing our hymn, When I Needed a Neighbour, on page five of your order of service. Please stand. So we're going to now collect up our flags. So if I can ask our two groups to come up and collect our flags. Everybody come around the altar. Everybody, let's come up and around. Let's get you to stand around the altar, all of us together. And we'll ask for God to bless us. Who's in charge of which flag? He's in charge of the cub flag. There we go. You go for that one. Who's in charge of the other flag? Here we go. Come and get the other flag. Perfect. Right. Come around the circle around the altar. So come up, up and around. There we go. Yeah, don't set the flag on fire. Yeah, if you wait. That's it. Wave it that way. And if you're really high, there we go. Wave it that way. Okay. Don't set the candle. Well, the candle should be on fire. We just don't want the flag on fire, do we? Okay. Let's bow our heads and pray for God's blessing. The Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, teach you to walk in his way more trustfully, to accept his truth more faithfully, and to share his life more lovingly, that by the power of the Holy Spirit, you may come as one family to the kingdom of the Father. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Now what we're going to do is we're going to follow the cross out and this is really useful. So Andrew's going to go the long way down, right to the back and then if the flags follow on and the uniforms follow on after that and Rick's going to play us out. Thank you, Rick. <laughs> 